the subcutaneous apomorphine pen injection for intermittent administration, and CSAI, require titration with medical supervision because of the risk of significant orthostatic hypotension and fainting. So let's review how to start apomorphine therapy and program basic pump parameters. For intermittent apomorphine injection, you'll need the pen, medication, and needles. The medication vial is a multi-use vial, but once it's open, it should be used within 48 hours. Before giving an injection, you'll insert the medication vial into the pen and attach the needle. The dose is then adjusted on the pen. The needle is placed into the skin of the abdomen, outer thigh, or arm. Pushing the button on the pen injects the medication. The titration of apomorphine with the pen is a crucial step in its administration. The rapid titration protocol involves a stepwise process of adjusting the dosage to find the most effective and well-tolerated dose for each patient. The goal is to achieve optimal symptom control without causing adverse effects. For the rapid titration protocol, the patient comes into the office in the off state. The first step is to document blood pressure when sitting down. Then, give one milligram. Next, assess motor function and orthostatic blood pressure 10 minutes after the injection. Then give one to three milligrams. Give a lower dose if the patient is on less than 600 milligrams of levodopa per day and a higher dose if they're on more than 1,200 milligrams per day. Continue assessing motor function and orthostatic blood pressure 10 minutes after each injection and stop when the patient is happy with their mobility or there is only mild dyskinesia. The last step is to calculate the final dose for the pen, which we'll cover with a case example in a later lesson. For CSAI, you'll generally need the pump with a syringe or reservoir, medication, line or tubing, and an adhesive needle. The syringe is filled with medication and then connected to the pump and tubing. Programming for the pumps varies. There is a continuous rate that changes automatically at different points of the day and night, and a bolus dose that can be given for motor fluctuations or off periods. The titration for apomorphine can be divided into three phases, the initiation phase, balancing phase, and fine tuning. The initiation phase will last about three to four days. During this phase, apomorphine is started on a low dose, then gradually increased while tapering other medications, including dopamine agonists, anticholinergic medications, amantadine, and COMT inhibitors. If the patient is not planning to wear the pump overnight, then it may be beneficial to continue the transdermal dopamine agonist. When initiating the pump, it's recommended to start with a continuous infusion dose of one milligram per hour. For off periods, the bolus dose, which is typically half to two thirds of the continuous infusion, should be used and recorded so that the pump settings can be adjusted. After the patient is off the first group of medications, then they transition to the second phase of titration, the balancing phase. In the balancing phase, levodopa is decreased while continuing to increase apomorphine. The goal is to decrease levodopa by 50%, and this typically takes six to seven days. There are two options for tapering levodopa. You can decrease the number of times this drug is taken or reduce the dose. Increase the apomorphine dose by 0.5 milligrams every four hours or by one to one and a half milligrams every day up to the dose needed to control fluctuations. This titration may be different depending on the oral medication regimen. Most patients have an average infusion dose of four to seven milligrams per hour during the day with lower doses needed overnight. At the end of the balance period, patients should feel their medications start working within 10 minutes of hooking up the pump. They may continue to notice mild fluctuations during the day, depending upon oral medication doses, nutrition, and activities. These symptoms are minimized during the third and final titration phase, fine-tuning, which typically occurs over the subsequent three months. So I hope you liked this video. 
absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.